I'm in California. It can't get better than this. As far as the internships are concerned, so I aimed very high. I applied to DeepMind. I applied to Apple for machine learning internships. So yeah, I was the uh, primary author on the paper. I applied to nine PhD positions. So yeah, going into IT, I knew what I wanted to do. Hey guys, this is Siddharth and you are watching College Companion. Here we talk about lessons on colleges, courses and career options. Ke bare mein. And a lot about cognitive science because that course I have pursued. And today we are very lucky. We are in the presence of Shivam Chaudhary. Shivam uh, is a research engineer at UC Berkeley. He did an internship at TU Delft. Mein, and he did his master's in cognitive science uh, from uh, IIT Gandhinagar. Pretty cool, yeah? So today we'll interview him. We'll talk to him about these three aspects of his life, uh, about UC Berkeley, TU Delft, and uh, IIT Gandhinagar. And hopefully we have a lot of things to learn from him. Thank you, Shivam, for accepting this. And how are you? Uh, first of all, thank you, Siddharth, for uh, interviewing me. Uh, this will also help me get my story out so that it inspires others who want to follow the same path and are a little confused about it. But yeah, thank you again for interviewing me. I'm doing really good. I'm in California. It can't get better than this. And how are you doing? I I think I, I think we talked before the interview as well, like you're in Berlin, Germany. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, time zones, right? Like we have three time zones to manage now. We both are in different time zones and then India Wala is always in our mind. So <laughs> so how is California treating you? California is amazing. The weather here is so good. It's, it's very, I would say it's very pleasurable to go from uh, 15 to 50 degrees Celsius, which was in IIT Gandhi Nagar, to 10 to 25 degrees Celsius. It's much more pleasant. And much, much, much better. <laughs> That's great. And you were able to make some friends and how are things? Uh, friends, still working on that. But, you know, it's a lot less people here than India. So it's that, uh, that much harder to make new friends. But yeah, it's still there. And it's so in the it's process. It's in, it's in progress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, you are at the sunny <laughs> side of uh, the world, and that's great. And California, it's just amazing. Hopefully, I can visit someday. So let's yes, start yes. it from the beginning. So you did your bachelor's in computer science or something? Yes, is? that is correct. So I did a BSc from in computer science um, from Saint Xavier's College in Mumbai. So it's an arts college, pretty famous. A lot of movies and songs shot over there. So whenever new videos or movies come out, I like yeah. That is my department right behind you. So, yeah, that's where I did my undergrad in CS. Um, I did a lot of software-related courses. And then I finally pivoted to machine learning and EEG processing. So, yeah, that is, I think, where my journey into cognitive science and brain computer interfaces began. So, 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 so to speak. Okay, so, so in your bachelor's, you knew about EG from your bachelor's as well or and no so it was it's a funny story you know it's, it's very different from what people would say like i've i've been so other stories like i want to pursue this from my childhood like yes they have they, they have begun to study about it but for me it was it was like quite different i joined this course because i had good recommendations from my family member family and friends so i joined it uh and also, while doing the course, I kept exploring a lot website development, app development, software development, life cycles in general. And and in my final year, we had to do a project. So I was like, I have already made apps. I have already made websites. What can I do further? It's a six-month long project. I can't just keep doing the same thing that I was doing. So my friend came to me and he said, this is EEG data. Take this and see what he can do with it. I'm like, okay, let's see. Why not? By far, that has been, uh, I, I have mixed feelings about it. Like, uh, that project was half inside, half done in COVID. So it was very difficult because you have very less support. Uh, and then it was also very rewarding when it finished. So I'm like, okay, that is something I can do. But then COVID started and then I, I joined a software development company. I had, uh, I mean, everything was locked down. I couldn't do anything. Uh, I, uh, 
yeah, basically I couldn't do anything. I was locked down. Uh, we were in a lockdown, so I'm like, okay, let's work for this company. At the least, I'll get paid and I'll get some money <laughs> or buy something for myself. So I joined that software development company for six months, and then I joined a cognitive science program somewhere, which I do not, I do not want to name. Uh, I did not like it there, so I applied for IT Gandhi Nagar next year, and then thankfully I got accepted. And then I went through that whole SOP process, interview process, uh, SOP process, written test, and uh, interview process, and then I finally got accepted. And that was a very pivotal point in my life. So, and then from there I gravitated completely toward computation neuroscience. Okay, well, some 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 journey, <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like a fun fun uh, fun memory to look back at now. So much chaos, and you were able to finally. Sort of get your way through, which is, which is uh, inspiring. I mean, of course, if you look back, you learn so much from your past, right? Like <laughs> you're a different person now, but uh, yeah, it's such right, a yeah, journey all of, always. Yeah, all of those experiences helped me shape. Yeah. As, as a person and as a researcher, uh, I was a software developer. I got that skill. I did cognitive science as I said, the same thing, but somewhere else. And then I joined joined IIT Gandhi Nagar later on. So that was. My by far very useful knowledge that I gained over there, and then that helped me uh, perform better. Okay. In general. So, so let's talk about IIT Gandhi Nagar. So do you remember your interview? How was your experience like? Any memories? Right, right. Yeah, that's also a very uh, interesting aspect of the interview process. So uh, it's, my interview was uh, guess what five minutes long, and okay, <laughs> yeah, and. I think most of it, uh, my most of my uh, major factor in my selection was my project that I did in my undergrad. So there was this professor who was also artificial intelligence and brain data, a specific professor, and then uh, he was also in the panel. So he was asking me questions, conceptual questions about what you did, uh, theoretical questions about the project, like why did you do this? Why didn't you do this? So basically, you have you did the project, you you should be aware of why you did things and how the, those things turned out. And then in the end, I told them that this is something that I did. I find this very interesting and I want to do this here also. And and I know for a fact that uh, this kind of research happens here because I, again, dropped out of uh, another college to come to this college. So I did, I had more insight as to what to look for. Again, that also helped. Uh, I had more insight as to what to look for. And then I told the professor, I want to work with you. And then I worked with him for two years. Oh, that is great. Oh my God. I mean, I I always, whenever I meet uh, other people from cognitive science and even myself, I usually say that, you know, it takes you one year to sort of understand your area. And I think you were already there and you, which is <laughs> that's, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's an advantage that I had, definitely. So yeah, going into IT, I knew what I wanted to do. Before that, I before so there was a three month gap between leaving the old institute and joining IT Gandhi Nagar, and that is when I finished all my machine learning and deep learning specialization courses. Did a bunch of projects, lot of data analysis, lot of this and that. And then when I finally joined in my second semester, we started working on brain data again. Uh, we had a course in computational neuroscience in the second semester, so I did that computational neuroscience course and I got up. Uh, get a project. It was basically a project course, and I I got some results. Wrote a paper. Got went to a conference in Italy, funded by IIT, and then that also helped me discover how people in other parts of the world do research. Yeah, that's cool. I think I remember your post, like about the conference. I think you posted about it as well when you came back, and so it was just in. It was just you and your professor, or was there further collaboration in that particular paper? So uh, I was the primary author in that. Uh, it was um, meditation data and e uh, meditation EEG data, and we did basic analysis that I that. So this was our third data set in that project that worked finally. I worked on much more difficult data sets, and then we finally came to this. I spent two months, around two months, on other other data sets, and then when we moved on to this data set, already had the code. It ran. We were very fortunate. So yeah, I was the uh, primary author on the paper and there was a, a PhD student who was the TA for the course and he he pretty much helped me to shape the entire paper. 
um, and then there was my professor on the paper. So and okay. I was the only one who went to present. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Makes sense. I mean, you were the primary author, so it makes sense. And and regarding EEG, uh, I mean, I mean, people, including me, when I first came across EEG, the data, it looks, everything looks so messy and it's so difficult to find resources. And there are only few people who are doing this in India specifically. So any tips on how to understand EEG better and how to go through the data set and how to draw conclusions? Uh, any tips? Well, when I, uh, honestly, when I started looking through EEG, it was very raw. I had I had uh, zero understanding of how it works. Uh, so mm, your best bet would be to go on YouTube. People explain a lot over there. That is where everything starts. And then when you get a broad idea of what 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 EEG is and how it works, then you specifically go into details of which part of EEG you're interested in. Do you want area specific EEGs or do you want to go into hardware side of EEG or do you want to go into signal processing side of EEG or do you want to just uh, clean do standard pre-processing and statistical analysis on the data. So it's there's a lot of things you can do. A lot of uh, all of them are very difficult to do, but it's it's yeah it's again it's that it's difficult. So you've got to choose uh, your field uh, very carefully over there. And I think it's good to have uh, online resources and also professors to discuss this with maybe. Because... Yeah. So I mean. Uh, as for to answer your question, I would say that uh, I read the ERP processing book by Steve Luck. I don't remember the name exactly, but it was Steve Luck, ERP, sig ERP signal processing or analysis. And that was very helpful. That that goes into the... So if you get the time, I would recommend reading that because it goes into basics of how brain signals work, how they propagate out of the brain and how they are seen in in, in an EEG. Uh, so that's the recommendation from you, Steve Luck, for the win. And yeah. uh, so, <laughs> so you also did your internship during your period, right? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, uh, as far as the internships are concerned, so I aimed very high. I applied to DeepMind. I applied to Apple for machine learning internship, and I immediately got rejected. And then I got busy with my <laughs> coursework. And then when it uh, when when the deadline was closed for selecting internships and uh, internships was man intern an internship was mandatory for us. It was accredited course kind of thing. So so when the time came, I finally uh, did not get long code internships. But then I uh, like a lot of the prestigious internships, the competitive ones, those I didn't get. So I finally uh, resorted to doing the internship with my professor at IIT Gandhinagar and his collaborator at TU Dell. So it was a remote internship, but we were very involved in that project. But don't be shy to apply to all the places that you feel like <laughs> applying. <laughs> yeah. The worst is a rejection. <laughs> no. Yeah, worst is a rejection, but yeah, but I'm at uh, UC Berkeley now. So exactly, if exactly. If things work out, then you'll be at the sunny California. <laughs> you just need one exception. You just need one thing to work out. Wow, perfect. And so, so after that, I mean, after the internship, you still have one year to go. People are in your batch are talking about placements. People are talking about PhD applications and masters and other masters and whatnot and taking a break and whatnot. So how was this chatter going on around you and what was your mindset? So I was pretty adamant on what I have wanted to do. So as I, as I said, I was a software developer. Uh, I did not go, I did not want to go back to that. And I was looking around opportunities for PCIs in India also, and there were not a lot that I was interested in. So naturally, uh, seeing my seniors who have gone for PhDs abroad, one of my seniors is in uh, UCLA, others are, uh, others are in Yale, all around the place, uh, UT Austin, I, I don't even remember all the other universities, but uh, then I realized that it's, and then you see the difference in uh, research publication or like impact factor, where the, where the labs submit papers and what kind of tools and technologies they use, what kind of funding they have. So I realized going abroad for a PhD would be a very good jump. If not, I can do it at IIT Gandhinagar itself. Uh, so yeah, a lot of, so I was very much interested in continuing my line of work. And so that only meant going for PhD. 
I did not think about doing another master's or another job. So, yeah, for me, it was pretty clear getting to academia. Yeah. And because the only, the, only, the only reason I say that is because I was software, as I said, software developer, a lot of the things that were, that I do was told to me, like, yeah, I was, as I said, I, I designed website, I was front-end developer and back-end also. So at the beginning of the day, I used to get um, uh, illustrator file and I was told that you have to make a code the web page like this. And then I realized I do not have a lot of autonomy in what I get to do. Academia offers you that and lots more freedom. So I naturally gravitated to this side. And I think it's helped that you had that small uh, software engineering stint. Like sometimes yeah. you need to do something to know that you don't want to do that thing. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, the time that I spent there was uh, amazing. I learned a lot of things and then, and then those things also help, right? Because I, those things never uh, go out of your brain. So those things, those skills were very helpful in IT uh, because I was creating EEG data uh, accumulation pipelines along with similar. So it's like creating an open source software system for collecting your data. Uh, that that took me an entire semester to do, but yes. But once it was made, I used it for multiple projects, and then uh, I suggested other people to use it as well because it was very easy to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, all the skills they help. It doesn't mean that you have to become the best cricketer in the world if you play it. It helps your like physical and mental well-being. <laughs> exactly. It's something like that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly that. That's quite, that's a very accurate analogy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. And then you, you, then you applied for multiple PhDs and positions. Right. And... That is also a very interesting part of my life. So I applied to nine PhD positions and I got rejected from all of them. And then I started looking for a research position. Uh, a lot of people told me that uh, they, nobody hires people from India right after their master's for a research position in person in the US. I'm like, okay, let's see. What's the worst that could happen? I will spend a lot of time. The worst I can get is rejection. So I tried everywhere. I tried in India also. I tried it. I tried in the US primarily. Um, first, uh, I applied to around three positions. The first position was I was pretty much accepted to, but the professor wanted someone to join immediately. And, you know, the visa process takes around a couple of months or so. So he said, if you get another, if I have another position, I can definitely contact you. And then finally, I joined my, uh, I interviewed for my current role and I got accepted. That was also not without its hurdles since it's a research engineering entry level position according to the job listing. So it's very hard to get uh, the international office to sponsor visas. So that was another one week of uh, thinking, am I, am I staying here or am I going? So, but yeah, finally they uh, accepted, uh, accepted my application and then I did all the uh, visa things and then reached here uh, in September last year. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Applying so many, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing, right? Like it's very important to talk about this because when we put ourselves online, like. Uh, people when post things, we're like, okay, oh my god, they're they are doing so cool and everything, which is true. But uh, also, it's it's like it's not it's not a eureka or something. It's like you have actually apply so many places and there's so much stress, and then especially moving to US visa. Oh my god, it's like one after the other. There is always something going on. You get accepted. Yeah. <laughs> you are, and then you're like, yeah, I got accepted. You are very happy for a day, and the next day, yeah, okay, it's the visa process, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, every every uh, every achievement is like a temporary happiness, but over time it accumulates, and then after ten years you look back and then you see, yeah, all of the yeah. stress and all of that was worth it. Yeah, 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 very, very cool, very cool. So, uh, so then you applied to this position. So, did you have a long interview or a written process and SOP and whatnot? I did, I did. So, uh, by March I knew that I was not getting into any college. Then I emailed uh, this professor. Uh, Professor Priyatana at UC Berkeley EUPA. And then she said, uh, she, since it, it was a new lab, and uh, she said, I'm looking for research engineers. So, so 
please when if you if you do if you do don't get in anywhere and then you're still interested in joining my lab please send me an email i will send you the job link so that was again a very long process i told her and then uh, you know there's a lot of paperwork and procedures that you have to follow to even list the jobs that are open to international applicants so that took a lot of time then i finally applied sent my cv sent my cover letter and then <clears throat> uh i did not hear back for a couple of months you know, i think it's a uh, i am assuming uh, my professor got busy with other stuff because you know it's a new lab we are working with monkeys so you have to apply for a lot of protocols a lot of approvals and then you have to do a lot of procedure basically when you join as a faculty this is what i have it is what i have realized so a couple of months later i got an email that i have been i am moving forward with the they are moving forward with my application and then i would have i will i interviewed with the postdoc my postdoc is very nice uh, she is from south korea and then when i when i interview interviewed with her it was time to see whether i fit in well with the lab because or and gel well with the postdoc because you know it's going to be two people for a very long time before other people join in or other people are hired so that went really well and then we are also discussing problems related to upcoming questions in the lab that we want to answer so so as i said my role is research engineer research engineer is short for research and development engineer so it's like r and d position so i had to do a lot of hardware and software integration so that was again a test of how, whether i could come up with solutions to novel problems or not that went well i think that is why i got selected and then i then i <laughs> then the professor interviewed me there was a coding round Uh, she sent me a Python notebook and said, "Turn on your camera, turn on screen share, and then go go for it, solve it." And then you know it's it's difficult to code when somebody is watching you. So that was a very stressful forty five minutes of my life. And then we went into technical, you know what I did, what I want to do in the future, and lot of interpersonal and soft skills related questions. Uh, how I handle conflicts? Have I handled conflicts in the past? Am I a team build uh, team worker? Can I work in teams or do I prefer solo? So all of those questions. So as for me, I was pretty flexible with everything. I can work alone if you want me to. I can work in teams if you want me to. I have worked. I have had both experiences. Not a problem. So I hope. I think that also went well. And then a couple of weeks later, I got my email saying that I am the top candidate for the position. But the visa thing is still pending. They she will confirm. Uh, whether they will sponsor the visa, and then one week later, the teacher she said like, yes, visa is your your visa can be sponsored. Please contact these 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 people in HR. They will help you in proceeding. Uh, and then I got my contract and all of that. So, and then when the frenzy began, started on Facebook Marketplace to look for houses. Yeah, pretty much houses. House was the biggest thing. Because for for renting a house here, you have the best chance you have to get something is to visit it in person. I I rented a house through WhatsApp video call, which was very scary, <laughs> but it worked out. It's pretty good. I feel very lucky about. So yeah, that's the entire uh, I think on the other two years of my journey. And what's your broad broadly? What's your area of research? Uh, I work with EET and human in 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 my master. Here I work with monkeys, and we go for invasive recording. So part of my job is to train those monkeys because they are pretty pretty new. They are very small, very cute monkeys. So we have to train them on how to interact with humans. On since we are doing upper limb experiments, there's this setup, PNM setup that uh, we want them to learn how to use. So they fight us in the beginning, but then as we give them food, give them juices, then they Start developing a liking towards us. That's how it goes. You re re reinforce basically behavioral re uh, reinforcement, giving juices, giving sweet stuff, and then they learn how to do experiments. That is still ongoing, and then, <clears throat> and then the experiment that they will actually do is what I am creating right now. So it's a big hardware setup where it's a dexterity maze task. Uh, If you want to learn more, we will be creating a poster on that soon. So I will share that with you, and you can you know. Perfect. We there. we will be waiting for it, and to know more, I'm sure everyone <laughs> would be very interested. Yeah.
and lastly just a couple of more questions so uh, i think that this is a very common uh, situation with many people who do uh, masters in cognitive science because it's such a new and a broad field and we often get overwhelmed by the possibilities of it and also the lack of it when it comes to the career options uh, at, at at an india level so any suggestions that you have for someone who is pursuing it right now or wants to pursue it regarding uh, the career options and how to go about it right so uh, beginning with if if anyone wants to join cognitive science what is cognitive science it's a culmination of seven fields psychology philosophy computer science robotics ai uh, there are a few more i forgot so what cognitive science is you come with a background of your own which is cs for me so i came with a cs background and then i took a bunch of um, neuroscience courses and then what my thesis was was uh, primarily un, uh, under computational neuroscience computer science and neuroscience so that is the only basic requirement to finish this course so if you are coming with a background in one de- in one stream and then you want to use the knowledge from another stream to create stuff to study to research then that is why you choose cognitive science for future prospects my my field is computational neuroscience and i did some uh, electronics robotic stuff also i would find so i so someone like me who who has done computer science neuroscience machine learning artificial intelligence and i want to apply that on brain data pci is one of those fields pci is also a very large field that BCI ethics, BCI policies, BCI hardware, BCI software. Um, if you're working with humans and invasive, uh, in in an invasive manner, then there are other things. There are the research technicians, there are nurses that take care of them, and there are neurosurgeons who do BCI. So coming back to uh, computation, uh, cognitive science and computational science in the future, combine two fields, see what kind of so you got to you got to be very um uh, it's a very niche field uh, to be honest so to you won't be able to go through a placement cell that will understand what cognitive science is and that will have and pick uh, hand pick job application hand pick companies that are hiring for certain roles so it's more you have to be proactive uh, in in looking for companies that are hiring Uh, with somebody with your skill set, or if you want, if you definitely want to join that company, then you learn things that the company wants you to uh, know. That's how it goes. If in your first in your first year, you would definitely do what the program requirements are. In your second year, you can uh, shape your own path and see what where you want to go. Okay. And yeah. then yeah, it's it's very uh, proactive approach. You have to look for mm-hmm. companies that are. doing stuff that you're interested in and then you have to mend your skills and learn new skills yeah. what they so it's important to not depend on a i mean i think the conclusion is that you should not depend on a training and placement cell like in a usual engineering setting and you should actually decide what's your interest and then apply accordingly that's the way to go i think a lot of us in india uh because of how the how things work in india we depend on the training and placement cell a lot but mm-hmm. this will not work in cognitive science that's like a yeah, conclusion so it's like not a standard route uh, you have to be very proactive since there since cognitive science is very nascent in india uh, there are very small startups startups that are growing up so placement cells don't usually usually pick up uh, new startups or yeah. i don't know what the policies are so i don't yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's complicated i guess yeah so, so lastly Yeah. yeah. So we are. I I just realized we are almost celebrating your one year anniversary now because you started in September. So That's just right. just the last question. What is what are the two things that I that you really love about being in California and two things that you are like, eh, okay, I'll survive, but not the best thing. Right. Two best things that I love about California is the weather, because I spoke about that in the beginning very uh, in, in very in depth. I love the weather here. Second is very beautiful uh, surroundings. You can there are so many national parks here, and national parks here are a big deal. The government maintains them, and they and then you have to pay to go inside and then hike, climb mountains, look at look at the sea, look at the look at the other side of the mountain. So it's pretty beautiful that that way, and it's a very driver friendly country. So you can do a lot of road trips. And cons 
cost of living is very high in Berkeley. Yeah. It is close to SFA, so all the entertainment okay. is coming here. Ah, right, right, right. My God. Thank you so much, Shivam, for your time. It was a pleasure.